Lift up your hands, we are in the attitude of prayers because the second half is before us. And I want to assure you, you will make use of this second half to your best in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lift up your hands, say, My Father, my Father, my, my father, father, my Father, any power in me, any, any power, power in me that is draining my strength, that is draining my strength, strength my, capacity, my capacity to climb the ladder of success, to climb the ladder of success, to succeed in this second half, to succeed in this second half, as I begin to pray, as I begin to pray, be uprooted by fire, be uprooted by fire, my Father, my Father. Any power in me draining my strength, taking away my capabilities to climb the ladder of success, to succeed in this second half. As I begin to pray, roast my fire. Clap your hand and pray. In the name of Jesus. We declare open heavens over your people. We declare everyone under the sound of my voice. We fulfill he or her predestination. The second half I command it to open up for you now. The foolishness that destroys destiny success part five. Is what we are looking at in this first service. We establish that destiny success is making success out of your predestination. We say that predestination is a reality of destiny. What we mean is your destiny has already been prepared. Whenever you see the reality of that destiny, that is destiny success. Destiny success number two is the implementation of heaven's vision, intentions, and purpose for your life. Paul speaking, say, Oh, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. So it is the implementation of what God said concerning your life, his intention, his plans, is what we call destiny success. Number three, destiny success is when your success reflects internal values. That you are a doctor to what extent did your profession contribute to internal purpose of God. God said to that man, O fool, tonight thy soul shall be required of thee. The reason is simple because he wasn't rich towards God. Destiny success number four is understanding the reason for success and how it applies and relates with the fulfillment to your destiny. I repeat, destiny success is understanding the reason for success. And how it applies and relates with the fulfillment to your destiny. The prosperity of a fool, the Bible said, destroyed him. The reason is because he does not understand the relationship between his prosperity and his purpose. Destiny success number five is an enduring legacy that is bequeathable to generations and inspiring to others. Having established that, we went further to deal with the foolishness that destroyed destiny. We have itemized them. We have dealt with about six so far. We said, number one, lack of commitment and obedience to instructions. Number two, we said, excessiveness that turns the heart of man from God. Number three, we said, it is anger. It is one of the foolishness that destroys destiny. Number four, we said, lack of honor for God. Number five, we said, pride. Number six, we say lack of value and respect for God. Number seven, prayerlessness can destroy destiny success. Prayerlessness can destroy destiny success. To assess destiny success, you must be prayerful. We live in a world that is full of battles. We live in a world that is full of struggles. Not to pray is to be at the mercy of satanic wickedness and incursions. To be free from the clouds of wickedness, child of God, you must engage the weapons of prayers. Failure in prayer is failure in destiny. Now hear this, sir. Prayerlessness simply means not being prayerful. Prayerlessness simply means not being prayerful. 
And I want to say at this point that prayerlessness is a sin. It's a sin against your destiny. It's a sin against God. And it's a sin against others. It's a sin against your family. Against people around you. When you are not prayerful, people around you will suffer. When you are not prayerful, you are sinning against God. When you are not prayerful, you are sinning against your destiny. First Samuel chapter 12 and verse number 22. Samuel said, God forbid that I sin against God by not praying for you. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. That I will teach you the good and the right way. I will not sin against God in ceasing to pray. So where prayer is lacking, sin is in abundance. Where prayer is lacking, mistakes of destiny will be in abundance. The errors of life will be projected against a man where prayer is missing. Is somebody hearing what God is saying to us? And therefore, every child of god that is not given to prayer cannot escape danger see what god is prepared to do to your destiny whenever you are not praying psalm 79 number six he said pour out thy wrath upon the hidden that have not known thee and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name so wherever prayers is lacking the wrath of jehovah rest imagine when god is angry with your destiny how can your destiny experience success imagine when all the forces of wickedness are released against you how can your destiny experience success hear me and hear me well whenever you do not pray you can't escape the judgment of god when you don't pray you cannot escape the arrows of jehovah isaiah 43 and verse 22 god reminded jacob he said to jacob you have not seek me you have not called me you have not seek me you have not called me he said that thou hast not called upon me O jacob thou hast been weary of me O israel you have not called me no wonder your problems are like that you are you are weary of me you have not spoken to me god yearned for your prayers because in the kingdom of man hear me god cannot intervene without prayers jeremiah 10 and verse number 25 god is going to pour out his fury on families that do not pray hear me he said pour out that fury upon the hiddens that knew thee not and upon the families that did not call upon thy name for they have eaten up jacob and devoured him and consumed him and have made his habitation desolate pour out their fury upon the hidden that does not know you and upon the families that do not call upon your name so how can a man that is not given to prayer escape the struggles of life the battles of life hear me sir if you forget anything don't forget this prayerlessness is worse than motor accident the havoc it will do to your destiny is better they break your legs and hang it in pop and let her walk that you experience the calamity that goes with prayerlessness only one thing satan cannot do satan can do every other thing satan can dance satan can praise satan can even speak in tongues satan goes to church satan can preach but satan cannot pray do you know why he cannot pray he doesn't have who to pray to he's a bastard he's a vagabond he does it because that's why jesus said when you pray say our father which art in heaven the moment you say our father in heaven satan is omitted satan is a bastard if you see him any day anywhere tell him i say he's a bastard he does not have a father so he does not have who to pray to is somebody hearing what i'm saying here so prayerlessness can destroy destiny success prayerlessness repels destiny success prayerlessness attracts sinfulness and sinfulness attracts judgment and judgment attracts shattered destiny is somebody hearing what i'm saying here where prayerlessness exists courage and strength is diminished courage and strength is reduced courage and strength will be lacking hear me child of god prayerlessness closes doors to destiny success it closes doors to destiny breakthroughs if you don't want to be a victim of deprivation 
then begin to pray if you don't want to suffer calamity then begin to pray if you want your dreams to be aborted then be prayerless but if you want to go far in life be prayerful if you are not prayerful you can't escape certain battles in life because prayer is the fuel that sustains life and destiny in the absence of prayer life cannot be sustained destiny cannot be preserved those who pray out child of god at last battles those who pray at last attack those who pray at last victimizations is somebody hearing what i'm saying here if you want your destiny to be fulfilled you must be given to prayer those who pray cannot be prayed by the enemy those who pray cannot be victims of satanic assaults those who praise their destinies cannot be amputated prayer is a life and destiny keeper is a life and destiny keeper anywhere you see prayer life is preserved where there is prayer destiny is kept am i talking to somebody here from today i declare by the power of prayer i preserve the next six months of your life Amen. i preserve your august september october november december Amen. i declare that the plan of the devil over your life shall not come to pass Amen. people who pray are not easily wasteable you cannot waste them they are not easily discarded they cannot be tormented hear me people who pray are resistant to danger men that are prayerful are always resistant to danger they can never be vulnerable to danger prayerlessness child of god is a trap for danger it's a trap for temptation it's a trap for attack it's a trap for battle any man that is prayerless cannot escape reproach nothing preserve future like prayer Luke chapter 2 verse 36 the Bible said by the prayer of Anna the Bible said she sustained her future the Bible said and there was one Anna a prophetess the daughter of Penor of the tribe of Asher she was of a great age she has lived with her husband seven years from her virginity that means she was married for only seven years and she was a widow of about four score 84 years that means for her 70 78 years she's been a widow she which departed not from the temple but served god with fasting and prayers night and what and day fasting and prayer and she's coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the lord now this woman was fasting and praying one among her prayer point was to see jesus she was to die but by prayer she saw jesus that day the bible said she was in the temple and they brought jesus and she shouted my eyes have seen the redemption of israel what i have prayed for i have seen it she was able to see the future of israel by prayer well i met her in the grave she was handling jesus and prophesying I pray in the name of Jesus that dream you have that vision you have about marriage about your job about traveling about that company I declare your eyes will see it Amen. if you are given to prayer your vision will not be aborted your dreams will not be frustrated Amen. your purpose will not be thwarted am I talking to somebody here Amen. receive grace to bring to pass your expectation for 2018 Amen out i receive i receive in this day where people are dying like lizards and you are waking up not praying you wake up you carry your phone like a possessed person you are going straight to 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 facebook to whatsapp to instagram and then you you stand up to bathroom too prayerless to be raised it is prayer that keeps your life it is prayer that saturates your life with the presence of god if you are not prayerful my brother you can't go far in this journey what are the evils of prayerlessness number one prayerlessness is the breeding ground for carnality 
prayerlessness, favor, lack of spirituality. It's the breathing out for carnality. It favors lack of spirituality. But prayerfulness enhances spirituality. So if you are prayerful, you will be spiritual. If you are prayerless, you can't escape carnality. And hear me, child of God, because prayerfulness enhances spirituality. Hear this. Spirituality favors security. Hmm. Hear me, child of God. Well, carnality favors calamity. Spirituality <laughs> favors security. Carnality favors calamity. You cannot be carnal and not be in calamity. All manner of calamity, can, you can escape it when you are prayerless. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 24. While man slept, his enemy came and so cares. He came when he slept. He did come when he was awake. So prayerfulness is spiritual awakeness. Prayerfulness is spiritual alertness. Prayerfulness is spiritual alacrity. Is spiritual fervency. Any man in prayer is a man in fervency. You cannot be sleeping spiritually. And so the enemy cannot sow his dangerous seed in your life. Prayerlessness is the breeding ground for satanic lawlessness. The purpose of the terror. Why did the enemy came to sow the tear? Is to counterfeit destiny. Did you see that in First Kings chapter two? The Bible said, "As I slept, my neighbor overlaid on her child, and her child died. And she woke up at midnight and took my living child from me and gave me the dead child. And in the morning, when I wanted to give my baby suck." I discovered that the baby is dead. By the time I observed a little, I discovered that that was not my baby. What happened to my baby? It was exchange in the night. Nothing exchanges people's destiny like moment of prayerlessness. When you are prayerless, you that is supposed to be a married woman can remain unmarried till death. You that is supposed to become a rejoicing mother of children can become buried to death. You that is supposed to be a millionaire, monificated, can be a popania till death. Jesus said in the beginning it was not so. It means that an enemy has done this. Can I pray for somebody here? Anything the enemy has shown in your life that is giving you the harvest of destiny you don't like. I don't know where it came from. Whether it is in your unguided moment. Today I undo them in the name of Jesus. His enemy came and so tears. His enemy came and so tears. I pray for somebody who latter particular palatas. Your enemy will not come near you anymore. Amen. Lift up your hands, say in the name of Jesus. Name of Any Jesus. carnality in my life, die by fire. Die by fire. Are you aware that it was the prayer of Jesus that saved Peter? If not, he would have gone the way of Judas Iscariot in Matthew 26 and verse 40 to 41. He says, Satan desired to shift your sweet, but I prayed for thee. It was the prayer of Jesus for Peter that saved Peter. He said, and he came and found his disciples asleep and said to Peter, Why? Could you watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak in Luke chapter 4 verse 14 Jesus returned in power because he came from the place of prayer and Jesus returned in the power of the spirit into Galilee no man give it to prayer that will not return in power Psalm 109 verse 24 anytime you pray child of God you are free from carnality he said my meals are weak through fasting and my flesh faileth of fatness. Anytime you are dried up physically, you become buoyant spiritually. Fasting and prayer gives you leanness physically, but buoyancy spiritually. 
Is somebody hearing what I'm saying here? It frees you from carnality. Nothing kills the appetite of the flesh. Like prayer and fasting. Number two. What are the evils of prayerlessness? Prayerlessness opens the door of destiny for evil attacks. It opens the door of destiny for evil attack. I'm telling you. Matthew 13, 24 to 26. The Bible says, well man slept, his enemy came and so tears. The purpose of the tears is to counterfeit destiny. To corrupt original destiny. Stretch your hand towards me. Any door that has been opened to attack on your destiny mm. as a result of prayerlessness. Mm. Today I command that door to be closed. Amen. I decree no life is too corrupted that cannot be constructed. I command your life to be reconstructed in the name of Jesus. Amen. No life that is too shattered that cannot be gathered. I prophesy to somebody right now anywhere they have scattered your life i gather it back in the name of jesus Amen. there is no plan of god for your destiny that cannot come to pass any power hindering the plan of god to counterfeit your destiny i command that power to rose by fire Amen. hear me sir god's plan for your life always arouse enemies attack that's right god's plan for your life always arouse the enemy's interest God's choice is the devil's target. That is why you must pray. The moment we give you prophecy, Satan sets you up. The moment God tells you, I love you, he sets you up. The moment the enemy, uh, the enemy sees God's interest in your life, he sets you up. Child of God, challenges are proofs of divine interest. Challenges that come to us, they are proofs of divine interest it's a sign that god is interested in you and that is why satan is after you when satan is attacking you vehemently it is because you have become the interest of god and what is your attitude give yourself to prayer give yourself to prayer because if not the enemy will come to so tears the purpose of the tear is to frustrate divine agenda for your destiny. The purpose for the tear is to counterfeit God's original purpose for your destiny. The purpose for the tear, child of God, is so that uh, what God intend for your life, the outcome of it will not be exactly as he intended it. And the Bible says he will sow his tear and go his way so that you can be at loss. Who did it? So that you can be pointing accusing finger to the wrong person and wasting years and days and months fighting the wrong target. May why he has gone his ways. And hear this when you don't pray, you, your destiny is counterfeited, is attacked, not just attacked, but the destinies of people around you is attacked. The Bible says he goes his way to where to look for another victim but in the place of prayer we stop him from attacking us and we stop him from attacking others that's right when you don't pray your mother suffers your father suffer your brother suffer your sleeping suffer your pastor suffer your church suffer everybody around you is under attack not only you will suffer attack everybody around you will be attacked because only in the place of prayer we stop the aggression of the enemy of our lives. We close the door of evil attacks. What you don't confront, you will confirm. So confront it. What you don't confront, you will confirm. The Bible says he went his way. Nobody challenged him. So it is in the place of prayer we challenge the activities of the devil. We challenge his demonic aggression. We challenge his assault on our lives. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying here? Stretch your hand towards me. I pray for somebody. Yes, on this mountain of prayer. Yes, 
may this truth enter your spirit so that you will approach these seven days with alacrity you will approach these seven days with propensity you approach these seven days with determination knowing well that there are activities that must be uprooted so that you don't surrender your august your september your october your november your december to demonic attack so that for the sake of your prayer your father's house can be saved so that you don't bury anybody so that their vision cannot be thwarted so that your brother finally can travel so that your sister finally can be married so that your auntie so that finally can be pregnant can i prophesy to somebody on this mountain whatever the enemy say you will have i command it to backfire 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 number three prayerlessness delays prophecy it is the evil of prayerlessness it delays prophecy israel in egypt for example they didn't cry they said nothing so they remained in captivity daniel also in babylon in jeremiah 25 verse 10 to 13 god said that their captivity will be for only 70 years he said moreover i will take them from the voice of men the voice of gladness the sound of the millstones and the light of the candles the next verse and this whole land shall be desolate and astonishment and this nation shall serve the king of babylon how many years ah huh? that is prophecy someone say prophecy confirm in daniel chapter 9 verse 1 we're talking about the seventieth. in the first year of dairos king of the son of Hasusoros of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realms of the Chaldeans. He said, in the year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the numbers of the years wherein the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he will accomplish 70 years where? In the dissolution of what? Jerusalem. The next verse, and I set my face unto the lord god to seek by prayers and supplication with fasting sackcloth and ashes why was he praying so that the 70 years will not be extended so that the prophecy of 70 years must come to pass are you aware that one year to 70 years they left captivity one year to 70 years. They then they fast forwarded by prayers. Fast forwarded by prayers. You God told you you will marry. You are carrying the beauty of prophecy. No prayer. God said to Elijah, go show yourself before Ahab. I will send rain. But he went and prophesied. But that wasn't enough. The Bible says he put his head in between his knees seven times. Until the servant said, I see a hand. Then he said, that is enough. He said, they have to saddle his ass. Because the rain will soon catch up with him. The man saw it in the spirit. He heard God's voice. But he had to pray it into reality. Every prophecy remains in the spirit until there is a man to pray. Every declaration over your life remains in the realm of the spirit until there is a man to pray. So you can be carry prophecy and die until you learn to pray. All this prophecy delays is your prayerlessness that is at work. Where there is prayers and insistence in prayer, prophecies are battered. Prophecy becomes reality. Prophecy is substantiated. Prophecy becomes evidential. What is in the spirit becomes physical. But when you don't pray, you'll be carrying prophecy till old age. And I prayed until she see prophecy to reality. Another man that prayed was Simeon. The Bible says he prayed not to die. The Bible says he prayed not to see death. Until he carries the Messiah. He was the high priest. That one too was almost 90 years. The Bible said he stood in the temple. One day he saw the Messiah brought. 
and the dove rested he said today let thy servant depart in peace for my eyes have seen the salvation of israel so men who got the manifestations of their prayers got it uh, of their of their destiny got it on the platform of prayers you you are not praying and you want breakthrough you are praying you're opening your big eyes looking at everybody you have another opportunity to shape in this year if the result you are seeing you don't like it you have another seven days to shape in it another seven days begins tomorrow to shape in it as a result of the urgency i also be holding midnight prayers on live television for seven days 11 30 to 12 30. we will pray 11 30 to 12 30 on live tv then come on the altar for another 30 minutes 1 a.m people go to sleep and that's what we'll do for the whole seven days and it's a serious matter in the presence of god because there are prophetic words we must back there are prophecy we must realize there are expectations that must come to pass understanding prophecy is very important psalm 14 and verse 2 you must understand prophecy very important if you don't understand prophecy you cannot know how to pray it he said the lord looked down from heaven unto the children of men to see if there is any that understands and see god he's looking down from heaven to see if there is anybody who understands prophecy who knows how to pray he's looking down waiting the bible said the eye of the lord runneth to and fro upon the face of the earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are right and perfect towards him who are ready to call upon him so what is god saying to us if you don't know how to pray you can't get your manifestation. You can't realize your dream. Then First Chronicles 28 verse 19. Bible said David entered his prophecy by understanding the plan of God for his life and he applied it in the place of prayer. And all this said David, the Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me even the works of this pattern he made me to understand by writing so i was not a novice so david's prophecy did not come that by just seeing a prophecy he understood it he prayed it he seek the pattern of his life the pattern of his destiny he carried it out in the place of prayer you can carry out your prophecy are there people carrying prophecy here did god ever promise you anything lift up your hand i decree with my eyes open your prophetic word shall come to pass amen. i don't like that amen your prophecy shall be realized amen. i say your prophecy shall be realized amen. lift up your hands say in the name of jesus in the name of my prophetic jesus, word my prophetic shall word come to pass hi what is the evil of prayerlessness number four prayerlessness replaces good with evil prayerlessness replaces good with evil job 21 and verse 14 and 15 good will always be the result of every child of god but when you don't pray child of god the good will be taken and the evil will be replaced therefore they say unto god depart from us for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways verse 15 what is the almighty that we should serve him what profit should we have if we pray unto him what profit do we have if we pray unto him? Verse 16 went on to say, Lo, their good is not in their hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. The good is not in their hand. You say, what is the profit of calling upon God, of serving me, of praying? He said, I tell you one, good is not in your hand anymore. Because when you don't pray, the enemy exchange your good with evil. Hear me, sir. One, whatever you touch will always be destroyed when you don't pray. Life will no longer be stable for you when you don't pray. Iniquity will be brought on your children when you don't pray. Verse 19 told us that the future will be hampered with and the future of your children. In that same joke, he said God laid upon his iniquity for his children. He rewarded him and he shall know it because he didn't pray god will bring iniquity on your children your children wayward life your children lack of fulfillment will become a judgment before your eyes 
you watch them reach the age of marriage they can't marry you watch them reach the age of being employed they cannot be employed you you see your glory being wasted before your very eyes the reason is simple because you chose not to pray learn to pray there is profit in serving god because when you don't pray your good is exchanged with evil what is the evil of prayerlessness number five prayerlessness barricades you from the help of god i'm telling you prayer is calling out for god's help in the midst of challenges prayer is calling on god's help in the midst of challenges the help of god is when god put his weight on you the help of god is when god put his weight on you and therefore it is in the place of prayer god puts his weight on you psalm 50 verse 15 he say mighty things can only show up when you call he said call upon me in the days of trouble and i will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not psalm 50 verse 15 i will show you great and mighty things call upon me mighty things can't show up when you don't call mighty things can't show up when you don't call god can show up to help you when you don't call so prayer is the breakfast of champion prayer child of god is the dinner of winners am i talking to somebody here prayer is the padlock that man's effort or iron fetters cannot break is the padlock that man's effort cannot break where there is prayer you close the door against satanic insurgents and incursions prayer 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 began in genesis chapter 4 verse 26 the first man to pray his name is enos enos was the first man to pray and he's the son of seth and to say to him also there was born a son and he called his name enos then began men to call upon the name of the lord from that day men began to pray enos was the first man that learned the act of prayer and when the prayer began when man failed man began to pray before now it was fellowship but after fall it became brutal prayer and the word enos means mortal 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 and the word mortal means man was not to live forever before now man is to live forever but after man failed, man is not to live forever. So anytime you call him Enos, you will not live forever. Or you will die. Or... The Bible said, and men began to call upon God. Hear me and hear me well. Since the birth of Enos uh, till date, men have not stopped to pray. Uh, except those who want to fail in destiny. From that day forward, men have not stopped to pray until uh, they see their manifestation. Sir, it is wisdom to seek the help of God. seek the help of God. When you don't pray, you'll be barricaded from the help of God. All these petitions flying around against you. Are you the only human being? There are others with plenty of petitions. Nobody's touching them. Because effective prayer is in the atmosphere. You in the days of your glory, you use it to fight everybody. Number six. The evil of prayerlessness. Prayerlessness breeds powerlessness. Prayerlessness breeds what? Powerlessness. Power is lost when prayerlessness prevails. Power is lost when prayerlessness prevails. Result is absent when prayer is missing. Result is absent when prayer is missing. Prayer enhances spiritual powerfulness. Elijah was prayerful so he was powerful. Elijah was a man of like passion as we are. But he prayed earnestly. He was powerful because he was prayerful. The kind of destiny you want to have can be created in the place of prayer. The kind of destiny you want to see can be created in the place of prayer. Prayer is man's invitation to God for intervention. So nothing makes you powerful like prayer. Sir! when you miss prayer you miss god to be missing in prayer is to be missing with god seeking god in prayer must be tireless pursuit seeking god with prayer must be tireless pursuit don't say you have prayed enough there is no overdose in prayer 
there is no overdose in prayer amos chapter 5 verse 4 it's time to pursue god it's time to seek god in prayer don't leave your destiny like that for thus says the lord unto the house of israel seek ye me and you shall live seek me you will live if you don't seek me you die you don't seek me the things that kill people will kill you seek me and you will live seek me and you will live so it is the mandate of the creator i mean the creator to seek after the creator it is the mandate god gives attention to those who seek it. acts chapter 15 verse 17 god gives attention to those that seek it that means you lack attention of god so you are not an attention on earth that the residues of men may seek after the Lord. That the residues of men may seek after the Lord. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called. Says the Lord who doeth all these things. That the residues of men may seek after the Lord. That we may seek him. We may seek after God. Because he is the one that doeth all these things. For him to do it in your life. To guarantee the success of your destiny. You must seek him. To play with prayer is to be a prey on earth. To play with prayer is to play out of destiny. To play with prayer is to suffer calamity and catastrophe. I take authority right now over every spirit of prayerlessness. I command it to die in the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't like that amen. As I command it to die in the name of Jesus. Amen. When you are not prayerful, you can't escape danger. Men who fail, fail because they did not pray. Men who succeed was because they prayed. David prays three times a day. Seven times a day he praises God. He never lost one battle because he was given to prayer. The question is, what is the cure for prayerlessness? What is the cure for prayerlessness as I begin to round up? Number one cure for prayerlessness is prayerfulness prayer is a platform for generating power for destiny success that's why you must be prayerful prayer brings heaven might against satanic resistance to your destiny it brings heaven's might so the cure to prayerlessness is prayerfulness prayer repairs damaged destinies that is why you must pray hear me sir no destiny is too damaged that cannot be repaired in the place of prayer no destiny is too corrupted that cannot be corrected in the place of prayer no destiny is too corrupted that cannot be corrected in the place of prayer hear me no destiny is too disrupted that cannot be constructed in the place of prayer in the place of prayer disrupted destiny can be constructed in the place of prayer child of god damaged destiny can be repaired in the place of prayer child of god corrupted destiny can be corrected the greatest need of our generation is power. That is why you need prayer. You need prayer to obtain power from God. That is why Muslim prays five times a day to obtain power to prevail on earth. That is why Judaism prays four times a day to obtain power to prevail on earth. That is why Hinduism prays seven times a day to obtain power to prevail on earth. Christianity! What is our prescription for prayer? Pray without ceasing. In and out of season. All this waywardness of your children is lack of prayer. When you pray, you bend them. <laughs> I was complaining on some members. God said, leave them, pray them. Pray them, deal with them in prayer. That's all. So from today, I may see you doing some things and I'm not talking because I'm dealing with you in prayer. By the time I finish, you will repair. Because there is no destiny that is too disrupted that cannot be repaired. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Deal with that your husband in prayer. Bend his kneel with prayers. You, are, you, are to, you left what gave you the power. The strength of the church is not buying weapons to reply them. The strength of the church is to cripple them in prayers. So what is a cure for prayerlessness? Prayerfulness. Be praying. You are in the toilet as you are downloading. 
You are dating. You are in the car driving to office. Membro seke teke teke logo teka ba broto sapra kata katos zekota. God gave us prayer language so that we can enjoy what we are doing. Then many of you, your prayer language look like stammering because you don't speak always. When a child speak always becomes fluent. Am I right? When you learn a language and talk about the language always, you become what fluent. When you are doing kara, 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 15 years, it is lack of prayerfulness. Where there is prayer, your prayer language becomes fluent. You graduate from one level of tongues to another. You go on to another dimension. Grado keba, brondo koska, jekota. I know the I know the prayerfulness of a man of God through his prayer language. The moment a man of God speaks in tongues, I just know his level of prayer language. Am I, am I talking to I just know his level of prayer. I know his prayer life by the languages he speaks. Am I talking to somebody here? Stretch your hand towards me. I decree in the name that is above every other name. May your prayer life move to the next level. Amen. 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 When your prayer life become congealed and deep, you prevail in earth realms. You prevail in earth realms. Susanna Wesley had 19 children that were backsliders, drunkards, girls that were useless. She went on her knees praying every day at least one hour, morning and night. Till she prayed the whole 19 children into the kingdom. That today we have John Wesley and Charles Wesley. Who brought the Wales revival. The, it, that revival was battered on the kneel of a mother. Who knew how to pray. People like Sabra Marovia. Who pray with the voice of thunder. People that like John Flicker. Whose bread stained the, the whole room. No matter how cathetic diseases were brought into the room they were healed. People like Father Nash. People like Father Eugene. Who prayed and they will use their hand and peel the back of trees. We are told that where Charles G. Finney and Father Nash prays, they will pray to a point that they will dig hole until they enter. They were calling Queen of the Coast, Queen of the Coast. I never knew Queen of the Coast until 1987. We are in the forest in Kars, Zaria. We are in the forest. We are on a 12 days fasting. The last 3 days was on dry. We were groaning. We wanted to pray like people like Father Nash. We dug a hole. Eh? We dug a hole till we entered the hole. We dug a hole till the hole buried us. It was not with hole. It was with hand. Yaga, yaga, prayer, hegobo, prayer, kaka, kaka. By the time we go into the third day, we are already inside a hole. When we are inside the hole, just about, just about 15 of us, but we dug a massive hole that all of us were inside. The queen of the coast appeared. He said, leave this place at once. Because you have troubled me enough. We continue in tongues. She shouted. It was like fire burned her. She took off. That was how revival began in schools in, in the 80s. That is how we began to raise dead people in schools. The place of prayer is a place where we back miracles. But today, you are too agile butter to pray. We are fasting for seven days. That is when you chose to travel. You are a witch. You don't like your destiny. We are fasting and praying. That is when you will come three minutes to closing. Just to dodge prayer. Just to dodge one hour prayer. And Jesus said, can't you watch with me for one hour? You can't start one hour prayer for seven days. Jesus said, except your righteousness exceeded that of the Pharisee. If not, you will not enter the gate. All this one, you have worn too much cortex and too much weak Brazilian hair. They are not seeing you, my friend. Bend your knees in prayer. It's more than five face. Because if five face can make you marry six day day, my friend, these seven days you will use it and squeeze head the devil out of your life. Squeeze that bad luck out of your destiny. Squeeze that witch out of your family. Destroy that altars. 
You have cried for that, that man called husband too long. It's time to cry to God on his behalf. And let God break him enough to use him. Am I talking to somebody here? For too long you can't secure job. It's time to grow. And lay your hands on your certificate. Grow and grow and grow. He said you have not travailed on to blood. Jesus prayed Gethsemane. The capillaries on his face broke. Sweat and blood mixed together. Reaction in the realm of the spirit. Hear me, hear me well. When battles are greater than you, there is one weapon given to you as a child of God. That is the weapon of prayers. It's time to backfire by fire. Any intentions of the wicked, let it go back. Whatever the enemy sold to me through dreams, physically, any property of the devil, I am carrying back to sender. How do I cure prayerlessness? I cure prayerlessness finally number two in the place of fasting. Where there is fasting prayerlessness is killed. In the place of fasting. Fasting is a key to spiritual power. Fasting is shedding physical weight so that you can increase spiritual weight. Fasting is shedding physical weight to increase spiritual weight. We fast to last. We fast to be fast in life. We fast to last. We fast to be fast in life. Fasting child of God. Releases the force that causes you to break forth. Fasting. Releases force. That causes you to break forth in things. It's a social delight. Break forth out of darkness. So you break forth in destiny where fasting is concerned. And we are going on seven days from tomorrow. Men of God will be raining prophecies and word on us. We will be praying using the scripture. Not to come here at 5.55 but to take excuse. The prayer starts with you. Whether the prayer is favorable to you or not. In the place of prayer, your life is contagiously affected. In this place of prayer, there is an aura. When the glory came on Mount Transfiguration, even the one that was sleeping saw the glory. Because in the place, that is what we call environmental influence. As we go into prayer, I have seen laws and decrees altered in the place of prayer. I've seen shackles broken in the place of prayer. There are some cases they bring to me. The Lord said to me, it goeth not except by fasting and prayer. There are devils you don't move until you pray and fast. You are too in a hurry. You are too in a hurry. And that is why things are not working in your life as they should. Now I want you to take sense of. And then go back. You began the year January. You fasted. Did you do it effectively? Well, in July, what are you expecting? The what you expect? Have you achieved half of it? If not, there's something called the second half. There's something about the second half is the warming up. It's another comeback. Somebody is bouncing back. We are taking new strength and new energy. We are confronting the powers that be. And we are going to succeed at all costs. Who is pledging to God to give himself to prayer and not to be prayerless. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, from today, from today I, subscribe I subscribe to prayerfulness. To prayerfulness. I, refuse I refuse to be prayerless, to be prayerless. In, my life. in my life from today. From today. As, we As we embark on this season of fast and prayer, prayer, I give myself to prayers. I give myself to fasting. Arise for my sake. Deliver me from the powers that want to hinder the success of my destiny. As I begin to pray, I clear every obstacle. I clear every barriers. I clear every hindrance to the fulfillment of my destiny in this place of prayer.
show me my future in this place of prayer i sustain my life in this place of prayer i sustain my destiny in the place of prayer i cure every abortion of my life and destiny in this place of prayer i refuse to be a victim of satanic powers and crossfires in the name of jesus in this place of prayer i secure the remaining days and remaining months of the year in the place of prayer i secure my destiny against danger against attack against wastage in the place of prayer i secure my family my career my destiny my future from satanic incursions and insurgents in the place of prayer i decree my spiritual life to increase in the name of jesus open your mouth and begin to pray the holy ghost Shut up, la 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 la